If you just turned on Remnant 2, you might see you have an update on Xbox and PlayStation 5. The update brings a console version of the game in line with the recent PC updates. I'm not going to list all of the changes, they are on screen if you want to see them, but I'll summarize all the big things that have changed in this update. Let's take a look. To performance and crashes, several improvements have been made to enhance performance and minimize crashes. Specifically, the developers have taken steps to reduce potential crashes that players might encounter. Moreover, they have successfully addressed an issue where the game would hang on the Remnant 2 logo screen during the initial startup. And additionally, they have tackled various problems that were causing memory leaks within the game as well. To provide players with more control over their experience, a new option has been added in the graphics settings. This allows players to disable optimization when navigating through menus. For achievements and difficulty rewards, the update has changed the Proving Grounds achievement and trophy to be retroactively fixed, ensuring players can now unlock it without issue, although I have seen some already who say it's still broken. Additionally, players who previously completed the game on Apocalypse level but weren't, a weren't receiving the appropriate rewards for Nightmare difficulty will now have their rewards properly granted. The team have also resolved the problem that prevented some players from unlocking the Revivalist trait, and they've also fixed an issue related to granting difficulty rewards that were influenced by localization. To progression and rewards, several progression-related bugs have been addressed. For instance, a significant issue where closing the game during the binding of three cinemags in the labyrinth resulted in the portal to the final world not opening correctly, and that has been resolved. Another bug that allowed players to use Havoc Farm during the transition to the final boss, causing them to become stuck, has been fixed. Another problem, such as the key in Quella's Rest not appearing and being unable to progress during the train siege issue in Nehrud has been resolved, and getting stuck during Talratha's metaphysical phase or accounting issues with the key in the Morrow Sanitarium have been fixed, amongst other things. To archetypes, they have successfully fixed problems with Archon's Tempest ability, ensuring its proper functionality with Big Bang. The issue of summoners' minions targeting corpses during the Magister Dulane fight has been addressed. An issue with the engineer's turret, which allowed movement through walls and doors, has been resolved. The team have also tackled a situation where your dog would try to attack a vulnerable enemy in the Labyrinth Sentinel. I remember people thinking that was a secret for unlocking the Archon class before we figure that out. Players experience difficulties with accessing archetypes due to them being displayed as exclamations will now find that issue has been fixed. Several issues related to gear and items have been rectified. For example, the problem of chilled steam not providing the intended movement speed increase has been fixed. Inconsistencies between Darksiders stat and description and advanced stats display has been addressed. The developers also ensure that Mudtooth's elixir bonus is now correctly displayed in the advanced stats display. Scaling issues with Smolder's mod damage have been resolved. The incorrect triggering of the Black Cat Eye during specific actions has been fixed. Unequipping the One-Eyed Joker idol will now properly remove its effect. Furthermore, a range of issues from stamina cost to mod bonuses have been tackled and resolved, ensuring the gameplay mechanics function as intended. Enemies and encounters have also received some attention in the update. Notably, issues with Gorge's rear spin attack not properly connecting with players has been addressed. The problem of the labyrinth creatures getting stuck in stagger state in various places has been fixed. Adjustments have been made to the size collision of Abomination's area of attack slam, ensuring it aligns correctly with visual representations. Changes have also been made to Abomination's plate so that they now take normal damage instead of resisting it. The issue of Abomination retreating too frequently has been fixed. Various other enemy related issues such as Chainsaw's Drand behavior upon death, Huntress interaction with summoner minions and arena related problems have been resolved. Lastly, the update includes a range of miscellaneous fixes aimed at improving player experience. Noble among them are corrections to locate where players could become stuck outside the world in Nehrud, visual issues related to lighting in the sky during the final portion of the campaign, players will now be able to toggle advanced stats on and off when returning from the map menu, various inconsistencies such as chain lightning not dealing shock damage, non-vendor town NPCs disappearing from some players, and level geometry allowing unintended access to certain areas have been addressed and resolved. Lastly, problems involving interactions with NPCs and conversations have been tackled, ensuring smoother gameplay flow for both single player and multiplayer. So guys, just a quick video on if you have an update for the game and you're on Xbox and PlayStation like I am. Those are all of the changes in the patch notes that bring the game in line with the PC version.
If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time for more Remnant 2 guides. Bye.